That's right, you know what today is, Avengers. But guess what? Probably by the time you see this video, Avengers will be out. <laughs> okay, um, Ken's here with today. Uh, yeah, we're soon here with Bill, being kind. Because uh, we got a big group that went to Tucson this year to see Sifu. But uh, we're gonna do another episode uh, in beautiful Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> and uh, nice and warm. No, it's nice and warm. Very nice weather here. Weingart loves the uh, terracotta roofs here. Uh, so okay, so what are we gonna do today? Let's uh, let's do something. Let's work on single stick first, and then we'll expand on that later. Uh, let's. I'm gonna have these two guys single stick right now, and, I, and let's just watch it for a second. All right, so there's single sticking here. Now notice some of the key things that you're looking for when you do single stick here. Notice, uh, keep going up and down. Up, down. Notice when you single stick, or whether you double stick or single stick, there's always a defined motion. A defined motion as far as the beginning and end of every motion. A lot of times you see people rolling really fast just for the sake of making it fast. But when he goes up here, okay, he's going into bong saw. Now, going into bong saw doesn't just mean, okay, I shoot up into my technique and jump. <laughs> what the hell happened there? Okay, sorry. Yes, you're too huge, Captain America. <laughs> You can tell this is a quality video that we uh, prepared long in advance. Okay, <laughs> repeating that again. When he goes up to Bong Sao, he's not just shooting up to Bong Sao, Bill's just not shooting up into Fuk Sao. What, what happens here? If the technique or structure is correct, okay, I want Ken to push into Bill a little bit. Okay, notice how it actually holds. It, it, you, you see the, the technique, you see the technique actually compress a little bit in. It's hard to see, but he actually moves in a little. But you never see him, if he pushes forward a little bit, you don't see him collapse in at that point. Okay, so that's one thing to, be, to, to look at. Know the difference between actually structure and actually what muscle is when you're doing single sticky hands. Now, another thing, know, when we talk about that, that point, I want you to do a single stick again. Go ahead, keep going. Stop, all right, go one more down. Every time you roll in single stick, their main goal is what? These two lines, these two hands are basically intercepting into the center line, okay? So if Bill doesn't have his hand here, this attack, Ken, Ken right here is actually aimed into the center and vice versa. If Ken doesn't have his hand here, his attack is aimed actually into the center. When you're doing single sticky hands, for, for that role, you gotta have a focus and target point every single time. That is very important. You keep rolling. And what I'm trying to do is just point out main things that you're looking for when you're doing single stick. Good. Now, another common thing that you have to worry about with single stick. Single stick is one hand, but in order to make single stick actually work, this side here and this side here is very important. The squareness of making it work is key. Why is that important? For example, keep rolling. Stop. Now, right now, Ken, Ken, Ken square, okay? That means his body is square to the target point. But if he doesn't know the squareness, how to hold the squareness, let's say he turns in a little bit. Okay, as soon as he turns, just uh, don't, you don't even have to exaggerate too much. If, as soon as he loses the squareness to the target point, guess what? What once was an intercepting line is automatically open. Okay, that is very key. You are always, you are developing that stage in single sticky hands to, know, to make sure you're square to the opponent. Staying square to the opponent is hard enough with one hand. Then you have to do it with two hands to balance it out. So this is a preliminary stage. If you can't do it in this stage, there's no way you'll actually do it in double sticky hands as well. Okay, keep rolling. All right, now let's talk about the Fuxa. Notice how, let's watch Bill do his Fuxa. 
Okay, the key thing to remember with the Fuxa is which way the hand is actually reacting to that point. If you notice, you guys can keep rolling. If you notice when he does Fuxa, his Fuxa isn't down, it's not planted down. Okay, it looks this way, it's swimming back and forth or flopping back and forth left and right, not up and down. Why don't you do Fuxa up and down? Basically, because if you go think the motion's up and down, you're trying to aim to the target. Okay, so if the motion's up and down and and go right there. Okay, now imagine Bill's hand is this way. If, if his force is going up and down, Ken removes it. Guess what? He flops down, his hand automatically will go down. Even if Ken moves his hand out of the way, if his structure ends up flopping down, by the time he realizes it, he'll go down first and then go for the punch. That's why this way, he's going forward. Every single time, he's shooting, he's shooting forward, 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 forward into the target. If you end up going like this, you'll end up shooting down. Okay, keep rolling. All right, so now let's do the basic preliminary attack from, from single stick. From here, I go pa from here, palm, punch, reset, okay? Good. All right, that's perfect. I asked Ken earlier to do it that way, as far as the palm, palm. The palm, palm in here. Notice how he, when he's doing it, and you're, I, he goes palm, extends, and he punches, and, and uh, I, I block the punch with a bong. When he did that, now, most people do that, okay? And I asked him to do that. When it, I asked him to go palm, extend, and then he, he punches bong, you, going with the force goes both ways, both for attack and block, okay? So, common mistake, when he goes like this, he palms and he, he extends out. What happens? At what point, when I do the palm strike, do I lose the target point? Why is that important? Because once here I initiate the palm, look, here's my target point here. Bill starts jetting the motion down. The target point's already gone. So if I keep extending the, the motion out, 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 I extended my full triangle out. And guess what? This is beyond the point where I want to actually apply the technique, okay? I never want to get a point. Let's say I want a palm. I, want, I don't want to be extended here. If I'm going to palm, I'm going to be in this range to, to, to apply the palm. So if that's the case, when you practice single stick, I go for palm here, and I feel I have the line, the line, the line, he took me off the line. No, I stop at this point. Because once I know the line's gone, I don't keep extending it out. I actually stop it at this point right here. Okay, and notice what? It's still within my triangle area. But if I extend it out here, what do I do? If this is my triangle, I just basically extend this part out of the triangle. Once you're outside the triangle, this is weak. You try, you, in, in the drill, you, you extend out like this, he punches, sure, you can block it. But if we're chi-sawing, goofing off, I extend it, he punches, you won't block it. That's because he's really trying to hit me. In the drill, you're developing that. So here, remember, the key thing is, don't extend all the way. Once the line is gone and the target is gone, I stop. See, I control my own technique, right? He punches, boom. He stops too. He doesn't keep extending the punch all the way too. Because at this point, target, 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 stop. Already he keeps shooting up, he'll go past my head. All right, that's key. Stay within the base of your triangle every single time. Never extend beyond that point. You are developing that key idea and key concept when you're doing single stick, all right? You see a lot of times people get excited about the attack and they'll be like, oh, extend out or extend out in that sense. No, I want to hear, if, if it's in the range, I'm here. That's the key. You want to develop the guts to move the structure into your opponent. Not here, I'm here reaching out. So once I'm here, then I'm in, in range and I still have the strength of the structure behind it. All right, you want to add in more? We can talk some more. People are learning from it. <laughs> I got another idea, but it'll be. All right, we'll add just like a little more. Keep rolling. Anytime that you want to do a oh, single stick drill, whether you're going up, down with the motion, like Ed was saying, there should always be that pause in between. If you get caught up and down, see, Bill could actually leave this point at any time. It'd be hard for me to block. I don't have any concept of what we call neutralizing. Anytime you neutralize, you always want to be able to catch that force. From here, I neutralize. You want to stop, feel that neutralization. I roll up, stop. Each person should feel that neutralization. Stop, feel that neutralization. If I'm just rolling, I don't feel any neutralized. Bill could leave this point at any time. And he could pick me off and get the hit. 
but I want to stop. Feel the neutralization. Feel the neutralization. Feel the neutralization. Catch the force. Catch the force. Catch the force. Don't get caught up in the idea of just rolling up and down too fast without feeling that individual catching the force in between each time. I, that translates to the two hands too. That's a that's actually a good point. Uh, let me just add the pinch onto that. That's good. Because sometimes you, you get caught in the pattern. And the problem with the pattern is you get used to it, right? In other words, if we're going single stick, we're just going here, right? I can make it look good, right? <laughs> But what's, what's, what are we missing? We're missing the overall feel of things. So for example, doing this fast is a waste of time, all right? But if I go from here, from Bong Sao, I control this point, I control this point, control this point. Every single time you're doing that, your development in Wing Chun and, and the benefits of Chi Sao grow astronomically. Okay, but if you just go up and down, you're wasting your time. A lot of times, and a lot of times, you could do something as common as this. From Bong Sao, I'm, I'm controlling, I'm controlling that point, then all of a sudden, you gap and then go from that point. You lose the whole purpose of that if you, if you do that. Control is from point A to point B every single time. And the problem is that amount of mental thought that goes involved in doing that and the awareness, for most people, is very exhausting. It's easier to do this for two hours. But if I ask people from here, every single time you concentrate and make the structure work every single time, three minutes, people will get tired. Remember, you gotta develop the mental muscle to actually train in Wing Chun, okay? That's very important. Just doing it and burning calories, you're just like any other joke on the street. All right, uh, probably add some more videos to this, but uh, go America.